I want to talk to you about the history of Southwest Family Fellowship. I really believe that it's important to understand our history uh, to help us get a better grasp on where it is we're going and, and really why it is we want to go there. And the history of Southwest Family is, is really tied up in, in, in my own history. Uh, I was, uh, grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and I wanted to be a lawyer since I was eight years old. I uh, went to the University of Texas in Austin with the goal of, of, of making that happen. But halfway through my time as an undergraduate student, I had an experience where God called me uh, into ministry. And so instead of going to law school, I went to seminary, learned what it meant to be a pastor and do those different kinds of things. Uh, and as I began to advance in that, God laid on my heart uh, to plant a church. And uh, so wound up, I was on a ch staff at a church in uh, Missouri for several years and uh, told the pastor, you know, I really feel like I want to go back to Texas and, uh, and start a church there. And he said, you know what, we would sponsor you in that. I bet there would be people that would go with you. And uh, so we decided to come back to Austin, Texas. I wanted to come and start a church for people that I'd gone to school with that either didn't uh, go to church uh, or had left it when they were young. People that were really new uh, to the faith. That was our, our, our target audience. We looked at this part of town, southwest Austin. There were not a lot of churches uh, back then in the early 2000s. And uh, we thought this would be a good place to come and, and, and a place that I wanted to live my life. So in the uh, summer of 2003, we had uh, 10 families move from Springfield, Missouri to Austin, Texas with the purpose of starting Southwest Family Fellowship. And on September 7th, 2003, we held our first services at the AMC Movie Theater at Barton Creek Mall. Uh, we met in that movie theater for, for six years, set up, tore down every Sunday, and uh, slowly but surely we began to reach the people uh, that I had wanted to reach. We had people from a wide variety of backgrounds come in and, uh, and, and come to know Jesus as the leader of their life. Well, one of the struggles with churches in, uh, in this part of town in South Austin, Southwest Austin, is the, uh, uh, the, the issue of buildings and, and where to meet. And, and, and we looked at every building in town. Uh, land is expensive. Buildings are hard to come by because of some of the environmental uh, uh, specific needs in, in, in our part of town. Eventually, uh, we actually wound up with a, a huge blessing. We were given some property uh, in southwest Austin. There was a church in Oak Hill that had started back in the late 70s as a church split off of, of another church in town. Ironically, a church I later found that my wife attended when she was a little girl. And uh, over the years, that church just had some struggles uh, and, uh, and wound up getting down to about five people. The pastor had some health issues, and so they just uh, disbanded and the denomination voted to give us the building. They said, here we've got this church uh, that has land and, 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 and some buildings, and, and, and they're just dying and, and, and not reaching everybody. And then we've got this new church down here that's growing and meet in a movie theater and desperate for a place to meet. And so they kind of put those two things together, and we were given this property at Oak Hill. Now, uh, when we got it, it had all kinds of issues with it. The original building on it was a, uh, uh, a white uh, washed log cabin tabernacle style building that was eaten up with um, uh, weevils. That There was a bug in it that you couldn't treat for and it was uh, really destroying the building. It was so dilapidated you could literally reach your hand from the inside to the outside, grab a rock and pull it back in. Uh, there was no working air conditioner. There were uh, big wagon wheel chandeliers uh, hanging above the old pews. It was really an old school building. Uh, and uh, we wound up getting permission from the city to tear that down and to build the uh, small metal building that sits on uh, the property uh, in the back now. But they didn't let us expand it any. We were, we were bound to the footprint that it was. So it was a, a small building. We renovated a couple of mobile uh, buildings next door for kids space. And uh, in those two buildings that uh, total less than 5,000 square feet, we began to hold services. Uh, eventually grew to the point where we were holding three services a Sunday just to get everybody into the property and, um, and decided that we would uh, begin working on building a bigger building on the front part of the property. Uh, when we did that, we knew there were some environmental challenges with the property. It's all in the, uh, 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 the floodplain, and it's also restricted because of uh, some of the uh, building codes in uh, southwest Austin over the Edwards Aquifer only allow you to build on 15 to 20% of your land. 
that was already taken with the property that we had and the buildings that were on it. Uh, rather miraculously, we, we had hired an uh, engineer who found in some old dusty books a, uh, a, a clause that allowed our church, so we were grandfathered in, not at uh, 20%, which is what's normally up and down Highway 71 here, but at 65% impervious coverage. Nobody knew that. But the city uh, recognized it and agreed to it and allowed us to build uh, some more. Uh, but the floodplain was still an issue. In fact, when our engineer went to the city, he was told, you know what, there's four problems with this. We can overcome three of them. Uh, but the fourth one is that there's no um, access to a non-floodplain road. Highway 71 in front of us was all in the floodplain. So he said, I'd put it at less than 20% chance you're going to be able to do anything with it. Oh boy, well, what are we going to do with that? Well, let's at least, we said, decided the next step needed to be to do a land survey, find out exactly what the elevations were, because even if we were going to sell it, we would need to know that information. And uh, so we paid several thousand dollars to have a survey done, and a couple weeks later, I was sitting in the engineer's office, and I walked in, there was just a map spread out on the table with some figures and numbers on it that I didn't really understand, and uh, our uh, engineer, our, our architect, walked in, and, and he looked at it and said, hmm... And uh, then a second engineer walked in. He looked at it and started laughing. And so I said, well, now I really want to know what this thing says. Well, it turns out that when they shot the actual elevation of the property, that in this whole uh, floodplain that's out in this area, it turns out there's an island in the middle of the floodplain. And we are that island. In fact, instead of being in the floodplain, 80% uh, of our land was not in it at all. And the 20% that was, we were going to dig a retention pond there anyway. So it, it, it allowed us to, to uh, build, not only build, but to save a ton of money it was going to cost us to have to uh, work around the floodplain issues. So we feel like God really uh, delivered us and, and did something special for us. And so we began, after a few years of meeting in that, in that first building, to build a second building, which is the worship center that we now sit on here uh, at, uh, at Southwest Family Fellowship. We moved into that in uh, 2013. And uh, we've been uh, growing as a church. Some of the dynamics of the environment still affect us when it comes to our, uh, our, our land. We're one of the most environmentally sensitive parts of town. And so the costs uh, that were in, involved in building retention ponds and things that we didn't anticipate wound up costing us our offices and our preschool nursery building and the rest of our parking. So what we have now is really phase one of what will eventually be a couple of phases that will finish out this property um, but we kind of feel that after this, God would lead us to plant other churches around uh, this area. So I don't know that we'll ever get just a, a, a real big uh, facility someplace else. I kind of like what we have and think that we've got plenty of room to grow here. So that's some of the history of the church in terms of, of the physicality of it, the building and the, uh, the mechanics and those kinds of things. But um, it's been my pleasure really to serve the church uh, uh, for uh, all of the uh, years that I have as their senior pastor and watch it grow. It's almost like watching when your kids grow from just a, a little thing to grow into to more and more uh, levels of maturity. And so I, I really enjoy that. Now, uh, you being new here, obviously the history doesn't maybe matter quite as much to you because you weren't here. What matters to you is the future, and uh, I want you to be a part of that with us. And so we're going to continue on uh, to talk about not where we've come from, but for the rest of the plug-in session to talk about really where we're going, uh, how we want to get there, and how we hope God will uh, lead your heart to, to go on the journey with us.